The whole point of SiteGrinder is to enable you to use the Photoshop skills you already have to create websites. This means that you'll spend most of your time just, well, using Photoshop, creating the layers that make up your design, and when necessary, adding SiteGrinder hints, like button, to some of the layer names. This guide is about the SiteGrinder workflow, so we'll skip to when and why you actually interact with SiteGrinder itself. When you want to see how your design looks in a browser as an actual web page, it's time to open SiteGrinder. Keep in mind that you can do this at any time, not just when your design is finished. We recommend, especially when working with unfamiliar SiteGrinder features, to build simple test documents with just a few layers. The first step in building your design to a browser is opening the SiteGrinder plugin window from Photoshop's File Automate menu. Note that as long as the SiteGrinder plugin window is open, you won't be able to use any of Photoshop's controls. The SiteGrinder window presents several tabbed panels. SiteGrinder presents the report panel to you to begin with. SiteGrinder knows a lot about things that may be problematic with your design, and there will be an entry in this report for anything you need to be aware of before you build. There are three types of entries in the report, errors, warnings, and information. Errors have a red icon and almost always need to be addressed by closing SiteGrinder and fixing the cause of the error. Warnings with a yellow triangle icon are less severe problems and style suggestions. Finally, informational entries are there to give you any additional advice SiteGrinder may think will be helpful given the contents of your Photoshop file. You don't have to deal with every single item in the report. Some are just style suggestions, and some may even be misunderstandings on SiteGrinder's part. If there are a lot of entries in the report, you can click the Save Report button to save it as a web page that you can refer to once you close the SiteGrinder window. When you have dealt with or decided to ignore the advice in the report, you can move on to the next step. Select the Build and Deploy tab. Here, you'll find a list of all the layer comp pages that SiteGrinder found in your Photoshop file. If SiteGrinder finds no layer comp pages, as in this file, it'll assume that you want to use the way the document looks right now as a page. This is called the last document state and is named after the Photoshop file itself. The left half of this page list, including the build button at the bottom, is what we use for the design phase of this workflow. So ignore the right half for now. We'll cover that in the next video. You can select which pages to build using these checkboxes. If a page has already been built and you haven't made any change to it since then, SiteGrinder usually knows and you'll find that those pages are unchecked in the list. You can force them to be built again by checking them. The next step is to click the Build button at the bottom of the list of pages. When you do this, SiteGrinder will start the building process and will open your default web browser to display a special page known as the Design Manager where you can customize the many visual aspects of your page elements that aren't possible to set in Photoshop. The page panel in the upper left shows you all the pages that you can edit here. If the page you want to work with is still building, you'll see a progress wheel next to its name. Once a page finishes building and the progress wheel disappears, click its name. SiteGrinder displays the page contents in the main browser window area to the right and reveals additional control panels on the left below the page panel. Which controls you see will depend on the types of elements in your page design. In this case, you can see the text button and menu styles panel, and the border and background styles panel. Use the arrow controls to the left of the panel names to open or close them. You can click and drag in the areas showing the panel names to change the panel height. You can also drag the width of the entire Design Manager area by dragging its right edge left and right. Each open panel lists the particular page elements whose appearance you can edit using that panel. Their names come from the names of the Photoshop layers they were built from, so good layer naming makes this easier. But even if you named everything Layer 1, Layer 2, Layer 3, you can still find them. Notice that as the mouse pointer moves over the list, each element you hover over is highlighted by a border in the content area to make it easy to identify the part of the design you're looking for. 
When you've identified an element you want to edit the appearance of, your options will be a little different depending on what you're editing. To give you just a quick taste of how the design manager works, I'll make background adjustments to a couple of type layers on this page design. We'll start with this text over on the right. Type layers start off looking like they did in the Photoshop document. To alter one, I'll create a new style for it from the Style menu in the column next to it. The Design Manager presents a window allowing me to name my new style. Below it are displayed the style options divided into categories. Clicking on the arrows by the category names expands or collapses them. I'll give this one a, a light gray background using the background control in the colors panel. I can view this change in the browser immediately when I click the apply button. When I've finished, I select close. At this point, I've done two things. I've created a new style, in this case named gray background, and I have assigned it to this element. I can now assign the same style to other elements listed in the same panel because when I make a new style, it appears in all of the style menus for the items in this panel. I'll change this text over here uh, to use the same style. The moment I choose a new style from the menu, the text is updated in the browser. The page elements you can edit in the Design Manager include text menu and button appearance, button and menu animation settings, border and background colors for text and other page elements, gallery settings, and form appearance settings. Pages that have been built to the Design Manager are not ready to upload. They're still under construction and require the SiteGrinder engine application to be running on your computer in order to display in a browser. Even though pages in the Design Manager phase aren't ready to move out onto the internet, they are very much like web pages residing on your computer. So you can even make bookmarks for them, or copy their URLs and paste them into a different browser if you'd like to see what your pages look like there. You can also use your browser's refresh button if there's any problem with elements not updating when you click apply or if the Design Manager controls fail to appear correctly. The process I've just described, where you first add layers in Photoshop and then build them to the Design Manager, is often repeated for the same page multiple times. After viewing and perhaps changing page designs in the Design Manager, most users will return to Photoshop, close the SiteGrinder plugin window, add more elements or pages, open SiteGrinder, and build again, repeating the process as often as needed. SiteGrinder will remember the custom styles I've given these elements in the Design Manager even after repeated builds. SiteGrinder uses your document name and the layer names within the document to remember styles and other settings, so be careful about changing the document or layer names for documents you've worked on in the Design Manager. The next Essentials Guide will cover the content phase of the SiteGrinder workflow.